Jeremiah, chapters 49 through 52. Then came all the leaders of the host, and Joanon, and Azariah the son of Maasias, and all the people, great and small, to Jeremiah the prophet, and said to him, Let now our supplication come before thy face, and pray thou to the Lord thy God for this remnant. For we are left few out of many, as thine eyes see. And let the Lord thy God declare to us the way wherein we should walk, and the thing which we should do. And Jeremiah said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray for you to the Lord our God, according to your words. And it shall come to pass, that whatsoever word the Lord God shall answer, I will declare it to you. I will not hide anything from you. And said to Jeremiah, Let the Lord be between us for a just and faithful witness, if we do not according to every word which the Lord will send to us. Whether it be good, or whether it be evil, we will hearken to the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us, because we shall hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. And it came to pass after ten days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and he called Joanan and the leaders of the host, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said to them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will indeed dwell in this land, I will build you, and will not pull you down, but will plant you, and in no wise pluck you up, for I have ceased from the calamities which I brought upon you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord. For I am with you, to deliver you, and save you out of their hand. And I will grant you mercy, and pity you, and will restore you to your land. But if you say, We will not dwell in this land, that we may not hearken to the voice of the Lord. For we will go into the land of Egypt, and we shall see no war, and shall not hear the sound of a trumpet. And we shall not hunger for bread, and there we will dwell. Then hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, If ye set your face toward Egypt, and go in there to dwell, then it shall be that the sword which ye fear shall find you in the land of Egypt, and the famine to which ye have regard shall overtake you, coming after you in Egypt, and there ye shall die. And all the men and all the strangers who have set their face toward the land of Egypt to dwell there shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine, and there shall not one of them escape from the evils which I bring upon them. For thus saith the Lord, As my wrath has dropped upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my wrath drop upon you when ye have entered into Egypt, and ye shall be a desolation under the power of others, and a curse, and a reproach. And ye shall no more see this place. These are the words which the Lord has spoken concerning you, the remnant of Judah. Enter ye not into Egypt, and now know ye for a certainty, that ye have wrought wickedness in your hearts when ye sent me, saying, Pray thou for us to the Lord, and according to all that the Lord shall speak to thee, we will do. And ye have not hearkened to the voice of the Lord, with which he sent me to you. Now therefore ye shall perish by sword and by famine, in the place which ye desired to go and do to dwell there. And it came to pass, when Jeremiah ceased speaking to the people all the words of the Lord, for which the Lord had sent to him even all these words, that Azarias the son of Maasiah spoke, and Johanan the son of Karii, and all the men who had spoken to Jeremiah, saying, It is false. The Lord has not sent thee to us, saying, Enter not into Egypt to dwell there. But Baruch the son of Nerias sets thee against us, that thou mayest deliver us into the hands of the Chaldeans, to kill us, and that we should be carried away captives to Babylon. So Johanan and all the leaders of the host and all the people refused to hearken to the voice of the Lord, to dwell in the land of Judah. And Johanan and all the leaders of the host took all the remnant of Judah, who had returned to dwell in the land, the mighty men and the women, and the children that were left, and the daughters of the king, and the souls which Nebuzaradan had left with Godelias the son of Akakam, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Nerias. And they came into Egypt, for they hearkened not to the voice of the Lord, and they entered into Taphnus. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and Taphnus, saying, Take the great stones, and hide them in the entrance, at the gate of the house of Pharaoh in Taphnus, in the sight of the men of Judah. And thou shalt say, Thus has the Lord said, Behold, I will send, and will bring Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall place his throne upon these stones which thou hast hidden, and he shall lift up weapons against them. And he shall enter in and smite the land of Egypt, delivering some for death to death, and some for captivity to captivity, and some for the sword to the sword. And he shall kindle a fire in the house of their gods, and shall burn them, and shall carry them away captives, and shall search the land of Egypt as a shepherd searches his garment. And he shall go forth in peace, and he shall break to pieces the pillars of Heliopolis that are in On, and shall burn their houses with fire. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah for all the Jews dwelling in the land of Egypt, and for those settled in Magdolo and in Taphnus, in the land of the Pathura, saying, Thus has the Lord God of Israel said, Ye have seen all the evils which I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon the cities of Judah. 
And behold, they are desolate without inhabitants, because of their wickedness, which they have wrought to provoke me, by going to burn incense to other gods whom ye knew not. Yet I sent to you my servants the prophets early in the morning, and I sent, saying, Do not ye this abominable thing which I hate. But they hearkened not to me, and inclined not their ear to turn from their wickedness, so as not to burn incense to strange gods. So mine anger and my wrath dropped upon them, and was kindled in the gates of Judah, and the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a desolation and a waste, as at this day. Now thus has the Lord Almighty said, Wherefore do ye commit these great evils against your souls? To cut off man and woman of you, infant and suckling from the midst of Judah, to the end that not one of you should be left, by provoking me with the works of your hands, to earn incest to other gods in the land of Egypt, into which ye entered to dwell there, that ye might be cut off, and that ye might become a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have ye forgotten the sins of your fathers, and the sins of kings of Judah, and the sins of your princes, and the sins of your wives, which they wrought in the land of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? And have not ceased even to this day, and they have not kept my ordinances, which I set before their fathers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I do set my face against you, to destroy all the remnants that are in Egypt, and they shall fall by the sword, and by famine, and shall be consumed small and great, and they shall be for reproach, and for destruction, and for a curse. I will visit them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have visited Jerusalem, with sword and with famine, and there shall not one be preserved of the remnant of Judah that sojourn in the land of Egypt, to return to the land of Judah, to which they hope in their hearts to return. They shall return, but only they that escape. Then all the men that knew their wives burned incense, and all the women a great multitude, and all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathura, answered Jeremiah, saying, as for the word which thou hast spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken to thee. For we will surely perform every word that shall proceed out of our mouth, to earn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour drink offerings to her. As we and our fathers have done, and our kings and princes, in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem. And so we were filled with bread, and were well, and saw no evils. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, we have all been brought low, and have been consumed by sword and by famine. And whereas we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and pour drink offerings to her, do we make cakes to her, and pour drink offerings to her, without our husbands? Then Jeremiah answered all the people, the mighty men and the women, and all the people that returned him these words, for answer, saying, Did not the Lord remember the incense which he burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers and your kings and your princes and the people of the land? And it came not into his heart. And the Lord could no longer bear you because of the wickedness of your doings, because of your abominations which ye wrought. And so your land became a desolation and a waste and a curse, as at this day, because of your burning incense and because of the things wherein ye sinned against the Lord. And ye have not hearkened to the voice of the Lord, and have not walked in his ordinances, and in his law, and in his testimonies. And so these evils have come upon you. And Jeremiah said to the people, and to the women, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus has the Lord God of Israel said, Ye women have spoken with your mouth, and ye fulfilled it with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed, to run incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to our drink offerings to her. Full well did ye keep to your vows, and ye have indeed performed them. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord. All Jews dwelling in the land of Egypt, behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, my name shall no longer be in the mouth of every Jew to say, The Lord lives in all the land of Egypt. For I have watched over them to hurt them and not to do them good. And all the Jews dwelling in the land of Egypt shall perish by sword and by famine until they are utterly consumed. And they that escape the sword shall return to the land of Judah, few in number, in the remnant of Judah, who have continued in the land of Egypt to dwell there, shall know whose word shall stand. And this shall be a sign to you, that I will visit you for evil. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will give you Ophrys, king of Egypt, into the hands of the enemy, and into the hands of one that seeks his life. And I gave Sedekiah, king of Judah, into the hands of Nabucodonosor, king of Babylon, his enemy, and who sought his life. The word which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch, the son of Narias, when he wrote these words in the book from the mouth of Jeremiah, in the fourth year of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Thus has the Lord said to thee, O Baruch, whereas thou hast said, Alas, alas, for the Lord has laid a grievous trouble upon me. I lay down in groaning, I found no rest. Say thou to him, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I pulled down those whom I have built up, and I pluck up those whom I have planted. And wilt thou seek great things for thyself? 
Seek them not, for behold, I bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. But I will give to thee thy life for a spoil, in every place whither thou shalt go. It was the twenty-first year of Sedechias when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Amateel, the daughter of Jeremiah of Lobena. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the ninth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nabuchodonosor, king of Babylon, came, and all his host against Jerusalem, and they made a rampart round it, and built a wall round about it with large stones. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Sedechias, on the ninth day of the month, and then the famine was severe in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war went out by night, by the way of the gate, between the wall and the outworks, which were by the king's garden. And the Chaldeans were by the city round about, and they went by the way leading to the wilderness. But the host of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and overtook him in the country beyond Jericho, and all his servants were dispersed from about him. And they took the king, and brought him to the king of Babylon, to the Deblatha, and he judged them. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Sedechias before his eyes, and he slew all the princes of Judah in Deblatha. And he put out the eyes of Sedechias, and bound him in fetters. And the king of Babylon brought him to Babylon, and put him into the grinding house, until the day when he died. And in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nabu Zardon, the captain of the guard, who waited on the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of the city, and every great house he burnt with fire. And the host of the Chaldeans that was with the captain of the guard pulled down all the wall of Jerusalem round about. But the captain of the guard left the remnant of the people to be vine dressers and husbandmen. And the Chaldeans broke in pieces the brazen pillars that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord. And they took the brass thereof, and carried it away to Babylon. Also the rim, and the bowls, and the flesh hooks, and all the brazen vessels wherewith they ministered, and the basins, and the snuffers, and the oil funnels, and the candlesticks, and the censers, and the cups, the golden of gold, and the silver of silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, and the one sea, and the twelve brazen oxen under the sea, the things which Solomon made for the house of the Lord, the breasts of which articles was without weight. And as for the pillars, the height of one pillar was thirty-five cubits, and a line of twelve cubits compassed it round, and the thickness of it all round was four fingers. And there was a brazen chapter upon them, and the length was five cubits, even the height of one chapter. And there were on the chapter round about network and pomegranates, all of brass. And correspondingly, the second pillar had eight pomegranates to a cubit for the twelve cubits. And the pomegranates were ninety-six on a side, and all the pomegranates on the network round about were a hundred. And the captain of the guard took the chief priest and the second priest, and those they cut the way, and one eunuch who was over the men of war, and seven men of renown who were in the king's presence, that were found in the city, and the scribe of the forces, who did part of a scribe to the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land, who were found in the midst of the city. And Nabu Zardon, the captain of the king's guard, took them, and brought them to the king of Babylon to Deblatha. And the king of Babylon smote them into Blatha, in the land of Emeth. And it came to pass in the thirty-seventh year after that, Joachim of Judah had been carried away captive in the twelfth month, on the four and twentieth day of the month, that Ulimadakar, king of Babylon, in the year in which he began to reign, raised the head of Joachim, king of Judah, and shaved him, and brought him out of the house where he was kept, and spoke kindly to him, and set his throne above the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments, and he ate bread continually before him all the days that he lived. And his appointed portion was given him continually by the king of Babylon from day to day until the day when he died. The First General Epistle of St. Peter, Chapter 3 Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair, and of wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, 
whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil, and do good. Let him seek peace, and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if ye suffer righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with weakness and fear. Having a good conscience, that, whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by the water. The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him.